What's going on, guys and gals? Chris, the Bonafide Hustler, coming to you live from the inside of my office. This, these lights are bright. Sorry about that. But anyways, welcome to my channel. If you guys are catching this for the very first time, my name is Chris. I, I'm also known as the Bonafide Hustler here on YouTube. I'm also known as the Bod Damn channel here on YouTube. And today we're going to be talking about six kind of hustler habits that are pretty healthy and I think they can really make a difference in your life. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And the very first thing is let's make sure that everything sounds good. So let me know if I sound okay. I got my $5 blue mic from the garage sale, a little snowball mic. So check, check, let me know what's up. Um, I have five things I really wanna discuss with you guys today. Some of the stuff you've um, heard me talk about, but these happen to be five of them. I think the most, some of the most, five of the most important things that you can do to start becoming healthy. And one of the reasons, I mean, so you might ask yourself like, why do I care about being healthy? Like I just want to, you know, watch resale videos and just go to garage sales and do thrift stores and make money. Like that's cool. Um, I don't think people can really, I don't p think people understand how much better your life can be when you are fit, when you can think better, you can think more clearly when uh, you view life as a huge opportunity rather than something that you're just chasing its tail. And so that's the reason why, you know, healthy habits and getting fit is very, very important. It's not uh, something that's really monetary per se, but it's something that will lead to more goodness in your life, whether that be monetary or love related or whatever else, you know, like mobility, uh, you know, getting fit, staying fit is super, super important. So this is a live show and I'm going to probably be on for about 45 minutes. I'm going to go through these five things and then I'm going to take some open questions from, uh, from well, one from Instagram and then um, maybe two from Instagram. I'm going to answer those questions directly. And from there, I will take open questions that are sitting here in the live feed. I want to say hi to some people that have, uh, you know, joined here. We have Destiny Gaming. We have Miss B530, Rhythm J on the Hunt, Josh, and Seymour. So those people here in the uh, chat, Seymour has said, your health is some nothing that you can resell. It is literally one of the hardest things to attain. You can't just accidentally fall into good health. You can't. You can accidentally fall into good, becoming rich. Like you could win the lottery and you can be rich tomorrow, right? But there's no way that you could be fit tomorrow. There's no way. So it's one of the most elusive things out there. It's the reason why sometimes you see uber rich people that are just completely overweight, hating their lives, uh, not really enjoying you know, the money for what it's for. Um, and then you see super fit people that have little to no money and they're feeling super great about life. Their outlook is good. And so there should be something said about fitness and hopefully in this show that you'll just, you'll kind of discover a little bit about what I'm trying to tell you guys. All right, so the very first question, the very first um, kind of tip I wanna give you is something that I get asked a lot, all right? Whether it be in the gym or it's um, just anywhere in normal life, uh, people ask about my diet a lot. So my diet, uh, the diet is gonna be number one and number four, and you'll see why. So number one, when I look at diet on a bird's eye view, I look at something that I've been doing for about now three and a half years, all right? So think about this, like I'm about to tell you something that I've been doing for three and a half years. I'm pretty sure I can speak about it at this point. I've done a, plenty of experiments uh, regarding this and I've tuned it to about eight hours during my day. So what is that? You might be thinking like, I can't do anything for eight hours during the day, it's impossible. Well, what I do for eight hours a day is I eat, all right? So I'm not eating all the way through the eight hours, but um, my eight hours of eating is my eating window. Meaning, number one, the tip I wanna give you is intermittent fasting, okay? Now, fasting is very healthy. It's been done for many centuries. It's one of those things that cleanses your body. There, you know, it's, it's, an, it's found in religion. It's found in everyday life. People fast all the time. In fact, the word breakfast is coming from break fast. So like you sleep for a long period of time at night, you don't get to eat, and then you have breakfast. You break your fast. You break a time window that you haven't been eating. So it's been done for a while. And in fact, you know, we refer to a, a word that's very commonly used as breakfast, like it's, it's in the word fasting. So um, I think intermittent fasting is profound and I've been doing it for three and a half years. It's not even like counting macros or anything like that. It basically is taking your eating window, which is probably 12 or 14 hours long by now um, and bringing it down to eight hours. All right. So it's very convenient actually uh, being a thrifter, being a hustler, being an entrepreneur, I think it's incredibly uh, convenient to do intermittent fasting, especially if you hate building meals and all that kind of stuff. With intermittent fasting, you just build a couple meals and you'll be fine, maybe even just one big one. So I've done intermittent fasting where I've had two really big meals a day. I've done it where I have three medium-sized meals a day or two larger ones, one medium. I've done all different kinds. And 
uh, right now, the most important thing is really to get the eating window down to like a really tight eating window. And so a lot of people are going to say that eight hours is pretty much good to go. Like at eight hours, um, I mean, you can you can start to see a lot of uh, amazing benefits with intermittent fasting, uh, but you're going to have to give it some weeks, some months, you know. Um, so it's easier to control a diet or to be in a caloric deficit on an intermittent fasting routine. So if you're sitting there wondering, I have trouble losing weight. I have trouble, you know, getting fit. This is one of the easiest things that you can do without going to the gym to start uh, controlling the calories that go into your body, right? So you fast, and uh, basically, it's you know some of the some of the benefits with intermittent fasting is that it helps with your cells, uh, helps with your cells to re get rid of waste material in your cells. It's really good. I can vouch for the fact that it has, I think, it has amazing increases of energy throughout the day because I'm intermittent fasting. Um, you get a decrease in insulin resistance. You get an increase uh, of energy. You get a decrease of bad cholesterol and bloodstream. There are a lot of good things, but mostly, and there's like each, even some, how do I say it? There's some ties to uh, some testosterone benefits um, or growth hormone benefits when you are uh, intermittent fasting. So I, I tell you guys this because I don't, I can't see life any other way. Like I still have a breakfast every now and then, don't get me wrong, but I can't see it any other way because I've been doing this for so long. And I can tell you for a fact that was it hard at first? A little bit, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't uh, you know, like I'm craving all this food or anything like that. It was, it was fine. Um, okay. It's kind of getting hot in this room. I'm going to put this fan on one second. I realize it's getting super hot in this room. Okay. So back to the program. Hopefully the fan's not too loud. Um, number two tip I want to give you are, uh, simple steps, right? And simple steps are very interesting because a lot of people can get, um, uh, how do I say it? They can get very worried about getting fit. It can be kind of overwhelming because now you see that there's this thing that's dire that needs to be done, but you don't know really how to attack it, you know? And so simple steps is one of those things that I think everybody needs to do. And it's the same thing as just doing a little bit each and every day towards the goal. If you try to do the entire goal in a week, you're going to fail. If you try to do it in a month, you're going to fail. You have to do simple steps. And one of the easiest ways to do simple steps is to cognizant be cognizant of all the thoughts that are coming through your mind, right? And so if you want to lose weight, for example, then you're gonna have to do, you're gonna have to start thinking everything possible down to the, you know, if I put my car further in the parking lot than normal, I'll get a couple more steps in before I get into the store, you know? When I get to the store, um, you know, I'm gonna push my cart around and I'm probably gonna be grabbing certain drinks and Diet Cokes and all kinds of random stuff, maybe some Lunchables, maybe some Fig Newtons. And you gotta start thinking, is this stuff really in line with what I want, you know? And a lot of people, they want something, but their actions don't go in line with what they want whatsoever. So you can just see that there's this huge imbalance and there's just no way it's gonna succeed. And thus, that's the reason why people think it is so tough to get fit because they don't realize it's a combination of like a thousand different choices made in a day. Some are subconscious that need to be made in the right direction. So um, it can be as easy as do I watch Dancing with the Stars tonight or do I go on YouTube and I learn, let's say, more about intermittent fasting? Do I watch some videos that are TED Talks about how to lose weight? Do I do things like that? And those are the simple decisions and the simple steps that need to be done and need to be executed for you to have this mastery later on, which is staying fit and being able to control your weight up or down, right? Some males want to be bigger and some males want to be smaller and some females want to be bigger and some females want to be smaller. So that's the reason why weight control is very, very important <clears throat> and not so much losing weight every single time. Um, so yeah, they say it takes 10,000 hours to become a master at anything. So if you can't even put five minutes or 20 minutes in a day or even an hour in a day uh, to get what you want, right? then how are you ever supposed to get to that 10,000 hours? I mean, nearly impossible. Um, that's one of the reasons why I feel as if my fitness is almost effortless. It's because I put my 10,000 hours in, you know? And now I just know it. It's second nature. And it feels great. It's good. It's, it's probably one of the greatest gifts ever is to have the gift of being able to control my weight up and down, uh, being able to control my physical body the way it looks up or down, ripped or built, whatever I want, you know? And um, the ability to also see the correlation between diet and how I think um, and things like that and how I implemented intermittent fasting because I was looking for ways 
to be able to circumvent building six meals a day and all this random stuff. And I was like, God, it's almost not sustainable in my lifestyle. I just can't do it. And so I was looking for ways. I was acting and I was making those simple steps in order to figure out how could I go around this and still get the goals that I want. So um, let's talk about number three. It's very, very important. Number three is the reason why I built my private label clothing brand. Okay. So I have a private label clothing brand called Strella. Um, some of the stuff's going to be shot pretty quick. I mean, it's, I mean, it's pretty soon, but here's some of the stuff right here. We got shirts, there's Strella shirts. We have Strella hats. There's some right here. And this is my private label brand right there. Now you might be wondering what the hell does Estrella mean? What is this? Like, I don't get it. Are you going to pitch me something? Am I, do I have to buy something to be fit? No. But Estrella is something that I've believed in for probably three decades. All right. And that is to really find your happiness outside, to do something outside every single day. Um, now this might be hard for some people. Uh, three years ago, I started a little thing uh, at January 1st, I decided to ride my bike every single day, whether it be a short little ride around the neighborhood or a long three hour mountain bike ride through the woods. I decided to ride my bike every single day and to see as an experiment how I would feel after a year. Well, what I figured out after a year is three things. One was that it was incredibly opening to my mind. Like I was able to think so clearly because of the rides, right? I was able to feel better about myself through the whole year. And um, yeah, I just felt really good. The second thing I found out was that writing every single day, while it's incredible, it was constraining because I was like, well, what about a day that I want to go, you know, skateboarding or a day that I want to go into a rock climbing? Or what about the days where I'm in California and I have to go surfing? So on days like that, I still had to write every day. You know, I didn't want to, but there were some days where I didn't want to and I want to do other activities. But I still was so far into my program that I decided to go 365 days with it. So that was one of the things I found out. The third thing that I found out was that I had a, I had a lot of, not a lot of walls, but I had two specific walls built up um, in my mind regarding this whole thing. And it was stupid walls. They were really dumb and they were overcome by clothing. Now, let me explain. So I wouldn't go ride in the dead of winter here in Austin, which the temperatures can be around 20 degrees or 30 degrees because I thought it was too cold. It was going to be too cold. Uh, you know, I'd have to bundle up. Um, and I would have to, you know, I just didn't think I could do it. And then when I had to, when I was forced to ride every day for those days in Austin that were like highs of 42 and like lows of 16, I still had to ride on that day. And my whole thing was like ride every day, like as close to 100% outside as possible, which then led me to, okay, I need to, oh, I think there's gonna be some thunder. Um, yeah, it led me to pack on a lot of garments on me. Like I had to layer up. I had to put, you know, balaclavas or whatever those things are around my face. I had to put mitts on. I had to put Gore-Tex this, Gore-Tex that. I found out also that when it was raining, I don't have to, go, I would have to go ride every day too, which was crazy. Um, and so I had to wear a raincoat, right? And I had to ride with my raincoat fully tucked, like where I was almost looking like that Cartman character on South Park, where it's just like, you see the eyes. And I thought I would never want to do that. Right. But then with this right every day thing, I realized it's just a matter of putting fabric on my body. And that was how I took my walls down quickly. So I thought it was very important. Do something outside every single day on year two. So that was three years ago. I did right every day. Year two, I did active every day, which was really important. That allowed me to not just be on a bicycle, but allowed me to go out and do whatever. I could do hit workouts in the park. I could go surfing, snowboarding, whatever, it all counted as active every day. Now, I really like that one a lot. I did that for an entire year. And then now currently I'm, ju I'm just on a kind of hybrid version of active every day right now. Um, but I think it has profound benefits. So as simple as maybe you walking with your loved ones and your kids or going to a skate park with your kiddos and maybe relearning how to skateboard again, or maybe buying a cruiser bike because your mobility is kind of off and you're not the greatest. Um, when it comes to, you know, shifting your body around like real quick. So just get on a cruiser bike or something like that. Get a bike with a step through frame. And um, they even make bikes with two wheels on the back. All right. So you don't have to even balance them, but get out there. I mean, reduce your walls and the things and those limitations that you put on yourself, much like me thinking, oh, I would, you know, I'm not going to go ride in cold weather. I'm not going to ride in torrential downpour. Guess what? I did. Right. I did it. And 
it felt great. And I realized this is, these are really stupid walls and we all have them, even myself. So um, yeah, do something outside every day. That is the Strella to me. It's being lost in active movement. That's the reason why I made the brand is because I want everyone to figure that out. I think it's so important before you go chasing money and inventory and posting crap on eBay and like thrifting and garage selling and all that stuff, just make sure you have some of these basic things down because all the money in the world is not going to matter um, if you're not happy and all the money is not going to in the world is not going to matter if you're unhealthy, right? Because eventually he's going to catch up to you in a doctor's office one day and uh, you know, shame on you if you wait that long, right? You should be attacking this now uh, before something serious happens down the road. Now, of course, something serious can happen to any one of us at any given time. I think it's better to control um, your destiny or attempt to control your destiny as much as possible. Number four, number four, and hopefully you guys are uh, liking this video. If you are, make sure you hit a huge thumbs up, and uh, I would greatly appreciate it. I'm gonna get to the quite. I'm gonna get to your questions soon. I got two more things I want to discuss with you. Actually, three. Well, two, and then a two and a half kind of thing. Number four is get a better diet. All right. So you've been hearing this for decades. You've been hearing it forever, and you might get a better diet. What the hell does that mean? How do I do it? So I think it's important to spend more money when you shop, getting food, picking it, reading labels, and spend less money when you go out to restaurants or when you just go out and out of convenience, there's a jack in the box there. Or for me, there's a taco deli there, which taco deli is good. Don't get me wrong, but I've cut back on that myself. But, you know, there's a taco bell, a jack in the box. There's a, you know, this healthy Chipotle place. There's Mad Greens. There's a bunch of other places. Now, here's the thing. Even if it sounds pretty healthy, um, the healthiest ones are going to cost a lot of money. Even if it sounds pretty healthy, you still don't know all the ingredients of everything that's going into the sauces, the sodium amounts that are going into the food. You don't know whether the meat is grass fed, you know, or the eggs pasture raised. You don't know these things at all. And that's the reason why I say spend up when you're shopping and spend less when you're going out because spend up when you can actually see what you're putting into your body. All right. Very, very important. So consider this real quick. If I was to tell you, uh, I made this analogy <clears throat> about two months ago when I was in California just talking to some people that met me for a thrifting meetup. And I said, consider this analogy real quick. If I told you that the car or the truck that you are driving right now is the last vehicle that you are going to own, all right? If I told you it was the last vehicle you're going to own, how differently would you drive that thing? How would you view maintenance? How would you view insurance? Would you get better insurance? You know, like what kind of decisions would change if I was to tell you that your vehicle that you drive every single day is the last vehicle you'll ever own in your entire life? Every one of us out there is probably going to do something differently because you realize, wow, this is a blessing. This takes me from point A to point B. It shoots me from weather while I'm going from point A to point B. I can go to further places and get awesome experiences because of this thing. People don't realize that the ultimate vehicle is your body right? And they act in a way that they're going to get another one somehow. But that's not the truth. The truth is you only get one body, right? You might get 10 to 30 vehicles in your entire lifetime, right? Trade them in when they're getting kind of messed up. We got too high of miles. You trade them in, big deal. You get another one. You don't get to trade in your body, all right? You don't. You don't get to go somewhere and go, oh, you know what? Uh, I don't like my body. Like, I just want to get a new one. Like, you don't get that. So why do we act in ways that align with this mentality that we're going to have another chance. It's crazy if you think about it. It's really weird. So think about that for a second. If you had one vehicle, how would you treat differently your own vehicle? So you do have one vehicle. It's your body. Now, how are you going to start treating that differently after the show? Hopefully completely differently. Maybe you can send me a message like, I'm interested. Let's do some more stuff, more videos. Like, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what comes around the corner. But I am very passionate about that kind of stuff because I realize I have one body. That's the reason why I stay super mobile, super active, like all the time, because I realize there's going to be one day where this body is not going to be able to do those kind of things. I'm going to get all this stuff out of my system now. And I thought at 30, there's no way at 40 that I would be able to move as good as I am now. I, I didn't think at 40 I'd be clearing creek or river gaps on my mountain bike. I didn't believe close to 40 that I'd be able to shred down a mountain in Vail or anywhere else in Colorado. I didn't believe it. I just was like, yeah, I'm going to get older and it's going to suck. My mobility, will, my mobility will be impaired somehow. And it's not. My body is actually better than it was at 30. I've treated it better. And I realize I have one body. 
So I decided to make very, very, very big changes early on that were sustainable changes. So that was intermittent fasting, you know, doing the whole simple steps thing, uh, doing something active every single day. I did things that align with the knowledge that I have one body. It's very, very important. So, um, yeah. Hey, what's up, Night Required Field? Good to see you, man. Good friend of mine right there in the chat. Everyone subscribe to his channel. He's pretty cool, and he's got a lot of cool, entertaining kind of things. But, yeah, one day I want to meet Knight in person. He works out all the time, too. He lives a very simple, stress-free life. I really uh, – I can see that he's very much in line with a lot of the things that I think. So, anyways, pretty cool guy. Go check him out. Um, number five is – uh, okay, let me go back to number four, get a better diet. You might be thinking, okay, what does that mean? Um, organic foods, if you can. Remember, remember, spend up when you're shopping, spend less when you're going out. Spend up when you're shopping, spend less when you're going out. Super important. Uh, organic foods, wild meats, if you still eat meat, that's cool. Organic fruits, organic vegetables, as much as possible, pasture-raised eggs, healthy fats, olive oils, you know, uh, avocados, nuts and seeds, all that kind of stuff. Like get into that, get into it now. Simple steps. Don't overcomplicate what's going on. The next time that you go shopping, try to make a couple good decisions. And then the next shop time you go shopping after that, try to make a couple more. When you're bored, instead of watching Dancing with the Stars or some other Melrose Place, Place reruns or the Connors or some, some worthless thing that's not going to give you any really good edge in life, you know, focus on something else, like looking at recipes to make, I don't know, your own hummus, for example. Look at TED Talks on how to be better with your body and get less, less depressed, for example. Every one of us has a little bit of depression inside of us. Don't even think that you don't. Everyone has something. Um, but yeah, look at things like that. Move the needle forward. Simple steps. Okay. Number five is strength training. Now, this is really important. This is the part that goes into the gym. You got to start moving a little bit. No, this isn't the part if you're a woman and you go into a gym, you're going to turn out looking like a Hulk and you're going to have pectoral muscles that are going to be super unattractive. Like, no, no, and no. Strength training is very, very important for circulation benefits, right? So, like, really circulating your blood through your body. Very, very important. Um, as important, you know, you can do the same thing with yoga, Pilates, bar, um, but purposely inducing weight in certain physical um, ways can you know, bl throw blood from one region of a bot your body to another region. It's like flushing it around, you know? So that's good. You want the pistons to move around. You want the blood to be freely moving around. So strength training is that. That's the thing where you go and yeah, sometimes you have to get a personal trainer and you get to learn how to lunge and deadlift and squat and do curls and assisted pull-ups and chin-ups and all that kind of stuff. That is strength training. So you want to get in there, do, go to the gym. You know, it's good for circulation. It's good for getting stronger. It's good for maintaining your mobility. This is really important because when you lose mobility, this is where things get very serious and life starts getting kind of, hey, eh, you know, but yeah, maintaining mobility and you feel better. So yeah, one of the best ways I've ever felt in my entire life was strangely Bikram yoga, which I don't really advise that on anybody because it's like in a hundred degree room. It seems like it lasts two hours, but it's really about an hour. Uh, but when you're coming out of Bikram yoga, so first of all, you like sweat an incredible amount. Second of all, everyone's sweat smells really, really bad, including your own. And you start to realize, wow, there are a lot of bad things in my body, toxins, and you can smell them. They come out and they smell. It's kind of gross, but just trust me on this. Like it, it comes out of your pores and everything. It smells like metals and like a sack of nickels and pennies. Like it smells weird. But these are all the chemicals and crap that you're ingesting in some of your foods, you know? It's just coming out. It's really odd. But trust me, uh, after a Bikram yoga session, it is a very, it's almost an out-of-body experience. When you're walking out after that and you have your clothes on, you're walking around, you're probably going to go get some food somewhere. I mean, you feel. I felt on multiple occasions like I was hovering, like floating, like I didn't even know that my feet were touching the ground. It was a very odd feeling. Um, kind of like, I don't know, not like drugs or anything, but it's like, it's just different. It's different and it feels super good. And it lasts for almost three hours, it seems. Um, yeah, no, it's not like DMT or anything like that, but that's what Ken is saying, but it was good. So strength training is number five. It's one of the healthiest things that you can do. To recap these healthy tips, before I go into your questions, number one was intermittent fasting. Number two are simple steps. 
Number three, do outside, do something outside every single day. Number four, get a better diet, all right? And then number five is strength training. Now, the number six is very, very important because eventually I will head in this direction, not permanently, but a part of my business is gonna head in this direction. And that is pay someone to help you, all right? So if you get inspired by someone, I don't care if it's Tony Robbins or uh, Nick Volchik, or whatever his name is, um, Grant Cardone, Frisella, Andy Frisella, the 10X people, all those people, Gary Vaynerchuk. I mean, pay someone to help you. Pay to get as close to that person as possible. If they're changing your life, you know, based upon a video, then think about how they can change your life on something else, like an accelerator course or um, a, a, a guide, for example, right? There are plenty of people that follow my hustler channel and they go, oh, wow, he's taught me how to make some money just watching his free videos. And so they go, oh, I wonder what those guides are about. So they get the guide and they go, oh my gosh, the guide's like over the top. Like now I understand this genre that he made the guide about. And the same thing goes for number six. And that's why I said it's kind of like a five and a half right here. Pay someone to help you. Eventually part of my business is going to go that direction. And I'm going to have paid options for, um, I'm already testing out some of my words in the background with like 13 individuals, but I'll have paid options for tra strength training, uh, paid options for, you know, just pretty basic stuff. I mean, it's not like therapy kind of stuff, but you know, if you really want to change your lifestyle, because that's the ultimate thing, most people are like, well, the ultimate thing is like waking up and having 20 things sold on eBay or 30 things sold on eBay. That's not even close to the ultimate thing. You guys are missing out. If that's the way that you're thinking, you're hundred percent missing out on what's really, really important. The ultimate thing is to wake up and feel super good about attacking the day all the time, whether it be with eBay stuff or garage shows or anything, or getting dinner with your partner or going to a, you know, the outside with your dogs. I mean, be able to look at every single day as like something that's going to rock. It's going to be so fun and you're in control of it. I mean, it's just a odd feeling that I think everybody needs to feel. It's almost like when you were a kid and, uh, yeah, it was like every day when you're a kid and it's summertime and you wake up and you realize, wow, like, there's, I have no agenda to that. I can do whatever I want. Like that's the kind of feeling that is similar to what I'm talking about. When you start aligning these things together, you get these feelings that you're almost indestructible. So pay someone to help you. Uh, very, very important. Uh, if you feel moved by certain people that you might see on YouTube or Instagram or uh, anywhere else, uh, you know, get closer to them, find ways to get closer to them. That is affordable to your budget or whatever. And really get there because you'd be surprised what one nugget of information somewhere could you know, just vastly change your life. So and I think a lot of us out there, I've met a lot of resellers and a lot of resellers do well with resale. They're really good. I mean, I envy a lot of it when I see it. But when it comes to personal health and lifestyle, they lack. A lot of them lack. I mean, probably 80 percent or more. And so I saw this as one of those things like, man, I really want to help everyone out. The problem is like I don't have an, you know, infinite hours in my day. So I do have a workout channel that's uh, called Bod Dam. You can go check it out whenever you want to. And uh, maybe we can turn a new leaf over for you together. So now we are to the portion where I go to Instagram and I see the two questions that came down. Let me answer them for you, whoever you guys are. So the first one is... Kathleen, as an entrepreneur, it's hard to eat healthy on the go. How do you keep on track when outsourcing, when out, when you're outsourcing and making a deal? So first of all, when I go outsourcing, it's usually no more than two to four hours. So I'll have a really big meal, then I'll go somewhere, and then I'll come back. But suppose I don't have that luxury. Suppose I have to go somewhere all day, and I might not come back for the nighttime. So you're going to have to pre-make your meals and stuff like that. So the most important thing to do is when you're pre-making your meals, look for very healthy options such as nuts, seeds, quinoa, grains, uh, grass-fed meats. Yes, you're going to have to put them in little Tupperware things. Yes, you're going to have to get a little cooler, but you can get those cheap at, you know, at the Goodwill or whatever. Yes, you're going to have to get into an ice block and put it on the bottom of the cooler and then put the Tupperwares on top of it and pre-build your meals. You have to, but you have to honestly go, yeah, that's a drag. But you know what else is a drag is going to the doctor's office and going, hey, so your scans came in and I want you to sit down because there's something very serious I want to talk to you. Now that's a real drag, right? If you could go back in time at that moment, you might go, you know what? Those little Tupperwares and pre-building meals and all that kind of stuff is nothing compared to the news you, you might get later on uh, based upon 
thousands, if not tens of thousands of bad decisions that you make eventually culminate into one giant piece of unfortunate news. Now, I'm not saying live in fear. I am saying that it is not, when you look at the, the weight of the two things, right? One is clearly something you don't want, right? And the other one, while it might be something you don't want, like preparing meals, it's not even close to the other thing, right? It's not even close. So why not, you know, mess with that and see where that leads you. Now, here's another thing that I want to kind of give you because I always thought the, the number was 58. And what I mean by that number is 58 days to start a habit or not to actually have a habit that doesn't go away. 58 days is what my psychologist friend, psychiatrist friend told me. And then upon more internet research, um, I found out that it was actually closer to 66 days. So if you're thinking it's painful to put meals in little Tupperware things and to pre-do things, you know, pre-cook your meals on skillets and get pasture-raised eggs and do all these things and, um, you know, get the best quality foods for your body. If you think that's, you know, tough to do in week one, you have to repeat that for eight more weeks to even get remotely close to having a habit that sticks. So that's how, that's why it's so important in the big picture to take these small steps now, because you realize 66 days is like, oh my God, I'm not even going to do it. Forget it. But if you go, what's the way I can move the needle today? That's the only thing you should be focusing on is not the 66. You should only look at focusing the needle maybe the next hour or today or the next time that you go into the store. That's when you move that needle for just a little bit, right? Because at the end of 66 days, that needle, instead of just moving a little bit, is going to be over here somewhere, right? So to answer the question, if I was outsourcing, making deals, I would specifically make Tupperwares that have uh, chickpeas, black beans. Um, they would have avocados, like fresh avocado in there. I would blend it all up. I'd probably put some salsa on top and I'd put it on a bed of like quinoa or brown rice uh, and maybe with some tofu or for protein, I would use like some wild fish or something like that. As long as that ice block could stay good for like eight hours, then I would trust that the fish wouldn't spoil. Um, so yeah, those are the kind of things that I would put into a square Tupperware-ish dish. It's something like that. Now, another Tupperware dish that could be like a medium-grade meal could be um, cut up banana with a scoop of almond butter, um, some strawberries, and then a protein shake in a shaker cup. Pretty good for a medium-sized meal. Then for your last meal, hopefully you'll be home by then. You can make yourself something really good that's nutritious and warm and in your own home. So... That's how you got to start looking at it. Remember, don't look at the 66 days. Look at just now. Look at right now. What can you do to move the needle forward? Um, so J-Dub says, packing, photographing, and listing keeps me in a house for a good portion of the day. How do you keep from wandering into the kitchen and snacking too much during the day? All right, so if you're snacking too much during the day, it's probably an issue of the foods that you are eating. If you have healthy foods, healthy foods um, require a lot of times less volume in your stomach and they are full of natural occurring fiber. And naturally occurring fiber tells your stomach, stop eating, right? Like it's enough, stop eating, you don't eat anymore. And your, your stomach might not even be full as in a content sense. It's just the fiber has signaled to your body like stop eating, we're already full. And that's the way you really want it to happen. When people have these overeating binges and stuff like that, they go for, uh, you know, it's usually salty snacks and sweet things. Even something as innocent as like Halo Top ice cream, um, you know, can be a problem because it's got pretty big amount of calories. Like I think I just saw a Halo Top today in the store. It's at 320 calories for a little pint. You might not think that's a lot, all right, because in a serving sense, it's like, what, 80 calories are serving. But once you go to the gym or once you get on a treadmill, see how long it takes to burn 320 calories. You get on a stair stepper, just watch the calorie counter when you're burning calories and watch it. Just watch it, watch it, watch it. Even if you're on a rowing machine, for example, watch the calorie counter and tell me how long it takes to burn 320 calories. It is freaking long, all right? It's, it's long, it's kind of painful, but that's the reason why people get in trouble because they're resorting to foods that are high calorie, um, that are easy to eat, and they don't realize what it's going to take to burn those calories off. So you start packing it on pounds slowly, you know, and then eventually you get to a critical moment in your life where you go, wow, this sucks. And then you resort to some weird diet 
and then it's not sustainable. It gets you down for a little bit. You lose 20 pounds fast, then all of a sudden you've gained 40 pretty quickly after because it's not sustainable. What is sustainable is making sure that what's in your living room, in your kitchen, all that kind of stuff are good, healthy foods, all right? My biggest thing where I started really realizing like, wow, I have like no control was like salty foods like chips. I was like, once a chip bag is open, Raken's the same way. If a chip bag is open if at my house when we're there and he's over, that chip bag gets destroyed quickly, you know? Um, but if I was to just put, you know, several cans of chickpeas and black beans out there, um, you know, put it into a pan and, uh, you know, put some avocado on top and some, some salsa and then put it on a bed of quinoa, for example, you wouldn't be able to eat that much because the naturally occurring fiber would trigger your system to shut off like pretty quickly. And thus you would just be controlling your weight inevitably, like really easily. So the reason why people put on a lot of food is the foods that they, I mean, the, the reason why people put on a lot of weight is because the foods they have aren't the right types of foods that you should be having that align with losing weight, gaining muscle, whatever. You usually have foods that provide no satisfaction when you look at your bodies, when you look at the stomach and like how it's reacting, there's like no satisfaction. So literally you have to eat as much as your stomach will hold and that's what triggers your body to stop as opposed to eating, you know, maybe half a volume that's half of the stomach, uh, like cut up zucchini or cut up squash, um, you know, with some apples as dessert. And you might think that sounds boring, but if you prepare it a certain way, it's actually way better tasting than anything else. So, uh, and you have, uh, you feel full, but then your body sits there is like, I'm feel full. And it probably had 450 calories. You know, it, you have to look at it as opposed to how many calories are you eating in a day? On, a, on the regular side of just you working and everything like that, probably closer to like 3,000, maybe 4,000 for a lot of people. You can get into a 2,100, 2,200 calorie diet pretty quickly if you put the right kind of foods together and you'll feel just as full. And then you will lose weight almost effortlessly because you are in a caloric deficit of some sorts just by doing that. Um, so let me go into the uh, questions real quick. It's a lot to it's a lot of information to digest. I get it. Digest, ha ha ha, eating term. Um, but it's something I'm really, really passionate about. And I do apologize if my thoughts or rants are a little out there, but you have to understand that I kind of just live this all the time. This is like all I care about is physical fitness, treating my body right, maintaining my my mobility, making sure my mind's in optimal state all the time, and helping people. So important, so important is to help people out because there's so many people out there that need help and I know I have the answers for a lot of them. So, um, Brian, the Oak Brook, Brook Picker, how much water do you drink per day? I don't know if it's a per, like it's probably over a gallon. I drink water, a lot of water uh, before and after every meal. One of the things, if you want a 10 or 15% increase in your natural metabolism, just drink a cup, a big glass of water before all your meals. Very, very important. Stay hydrated and you'll have 10 or 15%, a 10 to 15% boost in your normal metabolism just by staying overly hydrated. So very, very important. Um, if I looked at how much water I drink per day, like just reading that makes me want to go get water. Like that's how, you know, I just had a semi-salty kind of meal before this. So that's probably the reason why I want water too. But um, I drink as, mod as much as my, uh, not my body will let me because clearly I could drink more. I drink as much as it takes for my urine to be a certain color. Like I'm looking for a small tinge of yellow. That's all I'm looking for. A very faint tinge of yellow. At that point, I feel good. Um, okay. On the hunt, 90701. What are the staple items you always keep in the kitchen? Terrific question. All right. Tofu. Black beans, canned black beans that are organic, uh, organic chickpeas. I have, I'm trying to think what's in my fridge right now. Um, medjool dates, good source of naturally occurring sugars. Um, tuna, organic tuna, organic, no, not organic, wild tuna, wild sardines. Um, what else do I have? Uh, mango chunks, those are great for desserts. Uh, vegan protein powders, I have collagen protein. Mm, what else is in the kitchen? I just made the sauce for poke right before this uh, right before this show. So that was, you know, it was just some soy sauce and some chopped onion, some pepper, 
Um, and I'm going to be putting it on a bed of rice with tofu later. So right now it's kind of marinating. Um, yeah, but uh, brown rice, quinoa, garbanzo beans, um, spinach, romaine lettuce, uh, organic dressings, uh, pasteurized eggs. I'm just like thinking what's on the shelves. Uh, blackberries, raspberries, blueberries, uh, strawberries, um, low calorie Gatorade because I, you know, I ride all the time. Um, harmless coconut water. That's for my wife. Uh, White Claw. That's just left over from the lake days. Um, that's what's around my house right now. So um, I don't. Uh, I have a. I have a, a bag of open chips. <laughs> Strangely enough, it's sitting in my. But those are organic uh, chips by a company called Food Should Taste Good. They're called multigrain chips. They're really good. They're hexagonal looking. Really, really awesome. I buy all my foods from Costco. Just about every single one of those foods come from Costco. Uh, cauliflower rice. Yes, I have that as well. I have stir fry cauliflower rice that has a little bit of soy sauce kind of built into it. You just throw it into a skillet and you mix it all up with some tofu and you have a perfect meal right there. Um, Johnny Lamas. Chris, what brand of vitamins and which vitamins do you take? I saw you picked up some in your latest video. Very, very good question. So the ones that I take are Thorn. I want to say that there are two a day. It's a purple label. These are all methyl, bioavailable, blah, 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 like vitamins, like far beyond the vitamins that you get at Costco or Walgreens or CVS, Target, whatever. These things are like super vitamins. And so I saw a nutritionist not too long ago, and she required, she set me up with some things. In fact, to see her, it was a referral from my workout partner. He's like, you got to see this lady. So I was like, all right, cool. Like, you, you wouldn't shut up about it. I was like, all right, I'll see the lady. And then when I saw the lady, she's like, the only way I can help you out is if you bring all the things that you take, all your little supplements, bring it in a box and bring it to me. So I brought all the supplements that I take in a box and about half of them she picked apart. She goes, this, this is complete garbage, this is BS. Like your body won't use any of these things. Um, this is junk. So background on her, she is, I don't know if she's an Olympian or she might be a retired Olympian. I know there's an Olympian somewhere in that family. It might be her husband. Uh, so she's a nutritionist for Olympians. I know she's done nutrition stuff for Olympians. Her daughter is the fourth best high school ranked like tennis player in the country right now um so she knows her stuff and she runs this like awesome vitamin shop that's not too far from my house um so i took her all my stuff and she set me up with all kinds of different things like a better omega-3 um some iodine a aka kelp um some super vitamins and uh some of this other stuff that i was taking b12 which she cleared me on b12 she's like your b12 that you got from costco is pretty good don't worry but there were a lot of things that I was like thinking, oh man, like gummy vitamins, like that's great. She's like, these are garbage. Your body's not gonna use anything in these vitamins. So the one that I use is called Thorn Two a Day. It's got a purple label to the front. That one's really good. I use Nordic Naturals Extra Omega-3 with lemon flavor. And that one's really good too. All I know is after I saw her, my body started purging out different things. And it was like, no matter how, uh, how do I say it? No matter how, hydrated I was, my body was still like, when I went to the bathroom, it was still like yellow. And I was like, wow, that's kind of odd. And I think it was my body just purging out all this crap. Kind of like when you do the Bikram yoga and you get that weird like metallic kind of smell coming out of you. Um, my body was getting rid of things. And after I saw her, like I realized, wow, I take less naps. Like I don't ever take naps anymore, like ever. Um, I don't feel tired. I feel good, like really freaking good. So I don't know. This woman's like, you ever gone to Zelda? You ever played Zelda and Link? And he goes up to like like little fairy lady and like the little hearts go around him and stuff. And, that, and then he like exits out and he's all powerful again. Like that's how I felt when I saw the lady. So um, that's to answer your question. I use Thorn Two a Day vitamins. PJ Miller, do you try to eat gluten free? So I do eat gluten free, and it's because my gastro doctor said that gluten affects me in a very negative way. But he also did state that majority of people out there have gluten allergies to some extent. So most people shouldn't be eating gluten in the first place because inflammation is inflammation is inflammation, which is bad for your body. You can create a bad habitat for things like cancer to kind of start multiplying. You don't want that. Uh, Blissed Life, are you following a mainly plant-based eating plan? Um, with the exception of fish, and the two fish that I eat are three. I, I eat three types of fish, salmon, tuna, and sardines. All are, are wild. Um, so am I following a mainly plant-based eating plan? I thought about doing it and I might, we'll see. I'm not 100% sure if I want to, but I might do it. 
Um, so I do mostly plants and soy, and those are the three meats that I eat, and I do eggs. So, uh, or the three fish that I eat. I have eliminated beef, eliminated chicken, eliminated pork, uh, no bison or anything like that. And it was just an experiment. It was an experiment that I did four months ago, maybe longer than that, to see how do I feel. That's the most important part. See, this is the part that most people don't realize is so important is how you feel. Let me repeat that again. How do you feel? Do you feel super good? Like if you don't feel super good, then something is not right. And so I will relentlessly experiment uh, almost like a Tim Ferriss style until I feel really, really good. Like that is just what life is about. You should be going through life feeling super, super good, right? Am I wrong? Like that's what we all should want. It's not like we we're on this world for very, very long in the first place. So why not live it feeling the greatest that we can, you know, instead of, you know, waking up and feeling bogged down or, you know, the last three days or three days ago, starting three days ago, uh, while well, my wife was out of town. So I was like, you know, I'm going to go out like with my friends and like, go to concerts and like all that stuff. And I did that kind of stuff. And I did things that I don't know ordinarily do. Right. I uh, drank all the nights, which was like, OK, that was dumb. Um, I uh, <laughs> I smoked a happy thing. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you know, I did things that I know I don't ordinarily do. Um, and I noticed like when I woke up in the morning, I felt just like super off and it wasn't a hangover or anything like that. It was just the introduction of things that really shouldn't be in my body or now in my body. I just didn't feel good. So that's the most important thing you got to always ask yourself is if I do some of the things that Bonafide Hustler is telling me to do or Chris is telling me to experiment with, what's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to feel bad, right? But what's the best thing that could happen? You could feel better. So if I didn't take, let's say, simple advice like my workout partner said, like, go see the lady, um, for example, I would never have known that it was possible to feel that much better. And after I saw her, I was like, holy crap, like, I feel like super good, you know? Um, and it's like I'm always on this quest to find out more levels of like how to feel super, super good. And so, of course, that leads me to things like meditation and um just random stuff. I mean, honestly, there's like CBD things to get better sleep. Um, there were times for the longest time I would smoke weed before I went to bed, right? And to see my, the effects on my muscles, did I get better muscle out of it? Did I get better sleep out of it? Those kind of things. Um, so I'm always trying things out. It's really important. Um, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's important. I think we only know, they, they, they say that we only have decoded like 20% of the mind and how it works. Like there's 80% left over that's still just chilling there. And no one really knows why it's there or matter, you know, brain matter, just like not really activated too much. And it's just sitting there. No one can really kind of say why, what, what's it used for, you know? And so they, that's why they say like psychedelics and DMT and uh, ayahuasca and all that kind of stuff taps in to those unused portions of the brain, right? that causes them to fire off and that's where people get these profound experiences that ultimately make them feel better it's like they level up and if you think that's stupid that's what potheads do that's what like drug addicts do like no that's stupid consider this the greatest ceos in the world do it so it's something that you know i'm not going to write it off i don't know if i'm going to do it but like the world's greatest have done it <laughs> i mean think about it so um it can't be that weird. Uh, and I would hate to live a life like with a a wall built so high that I figure out, like, let's say when I'm 80, like, oh, my gosh, like, why didn't I tear down this wall way earlier? Like, what kept me from doing that? So things to consider. Okay. Other questions? Um, <laughs> yeah. The title of the video paired with a picture of animal flesh is pretty funny. I know. It's the only thing I can find on uh, Google. So. Um, Johnny says, thanks for answering. I just want to say that your videos have truly inspired me. Thank you, Johnny. All I want to do is garage selling and thrifting, eat clean, stay active, lift, and just live life. Thank you. You're so welcome. Maybe one day we can meet up. That would be awesome. Uh, on the hunt 90701, another great question. When you eat out, what types of food do you look for? You know, 
It depends on how long that I've been eating good for because that can only last for so long. Eventually, I start to go, you know what? Like, it'd be cool to have, and it's usually for me, like pizza or it's like a Mexican, you know, restaurant where I start off with the chips and salsa and you eat a bunch of it and you don't even want to eat anything else after that. But then here comes your dish and it's like enchiladas and you gobble up like enchiladas and you're like, I can't have any more. And the person goes, do you want flan? And I'm like, you know what? I want flan. Cool. Gobble up the flan. Like that is a good reward for having many days in a row of eating good. Uh, last weekend, I mean, I had many days of eating good. And then last weekend, one of my friends came in town. That's why we went to all the concerts. We went downtown, drank, whatever. Um, and just really went with no limits. Like there were no limits when I ate whatever. And I wasn't sitting there like, oh, I'm just throwing my body in the, in the crap, you know, into the crapper. Like ooh, that my habit is so strong that once I'm done with this, you know, he's gone out of town and no more concerts and no more bad food. Like I'm just going to go back to my normal routine, which is going in the gym, saying hi to my friends, eating healthy and doing the right thing. And I think it's important to do those kind of things. So to answer the question, um, what do I do? What time, what do I eat? And what do I, what do I eat out? Okay. When do I eat out? What do I eat? And what do I look for? I just go to eat whatever sounds good. I'm not going to put a big roadblock going. You can't have any of that. Can't have any of that, you know? <clears throat> so if I'm in a bar watching football <clears throat> with a bunch of friends and all of a sudden, you know, a tray crosses my point of view and it's got fried pickles and like ranch dressing, like, you know, instead of having like eight of them, I might have two of them. And I'll be like, you know what? Like I got the taste out of my system. Like tastes good, big deal. Like it's still bad for me. Like next, you know? Um, and that's the kind of thing that your taste buds are going to also change. If you start to eat healthy taste buds, will start to crave better food. It's just going to know when there's junk, it'll, it'll sense it. It's just like a BS meter. It goes, nah, that's not good. Like that's not good at all. That's the stuff that makes me feel slow. <clears throat> and so that's the reason why I don't have a really good answer to that question is because I don't live a life that has boundaries like that. I just do the right thing a majority of the times where I can undo it 1% of the time if I want to. Um, <laughs> Um, okay. Here's one. Have I gone to Burning Man? I have not, but, uh, I'm not going to outrule it. I've heard a lot of bad, I've heard a lot of good and bad things about Burning Man. So it's funny you were asking about Burning Man because me and E-Money were just talking about Burning Man earlier today, earlier today. Um, do you French? Do I take any medications? I take some medications that my doctor has like prescribed for me. Uh, it's mostly like, asthma related. Um, I don't have bad asthma. It's just there. So it doesn't kick up or anything. Um, interesting. Okay. So Prozac and Adderall. Yeah. A lot of people are on Prozac and Adderall. That's the thing. It's pretty common. And, um, he's saying, I'm thinking about trying nootropics or I, I am trying nootropics, 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 what people say. Um, these are things like alpha brain. Uh, there's so many different things out there. I mean, you could even say nootropics could be as something as simple as, cutting up a nicotine lozenge, for example, and popping one in your system as right before you go studying, you know, for example. Um, so anything can be kind of considered that. Um, it's basically like mind hacking, brain hacking. Uh, it's things that unlock those those concentration bouts and things like that. So um, I don't have trouble concentrating per se. I think caffeine helps with that. Um, but I think if I was to ever experiment with something else, to let's say attain three hours of unbroken like time to where I could build something. Um, I don't think caffeine would really be the answer there. Uh, it would either have to be some sort of music or small pieces of nicotine. I mean, honestly, like most people have such a, there's such a bad stigma to nicotine out there. It's insane. But when you look down at the hard studies on it, like it can help you concentrate like really, really crazy amounts. So, uh, always something to consider. I, I haven't done it, but I've definitely, cons I mean, I've done it, but like I haven't done it for those kind of purposes. And I don't know. Um, Iran says, have you heard of Kino body? I have, I know who that is. Um, best intermittent fasting advice I've found on the internet so far. He's pretty good. Um, not too bad. He, he rants about it, but for the most part, I, I like Kino body. I think the way he looks at intermittent fasting is kind of like a bad, Oh, uh, how do I say it without being like, I'm not going to slam the guy. Like he's, he knows what he's talking about. Um, but I think when behind the scenes to attain the kind of body that he has, I think he's mostly eating clean. Like a lot of times when he makes these like really crazy videos about like 
intermittent fasting and here's all you got to do. And he like whittles it down to these simple things like you can eat whatever you want in your eating window. And that can be semi true in rats, for example. Um, they found that rats that were intermittent fasting for eight hours. So they had an eating window of eight hours could almost eat anything possible and not gain a single ounce of weight while remaining really sharp when it came to like aptitude tests. Um, when it came down to nine hours of an eating window, I think the rats still performed super good, um, but their aptitude was like down a little bit. But either way, eight or nine hours of an eating window with rat studies shows like, man, they were just feeding these things like saccharin and all these kind of crazy foods and the rats would not gain any weight whatsoever. So the same, I don't know if the same can be said with human beings, um, but I can honestly say that with an eight hour eating window that it's never been easier for me to control my weight. Um, and it's because of intermittent, intermittent fasting. So to answer that question, um, Iran, I've heard about him. I don't know if it's the best advice because I would never say to go intermittent fasting and just start eating whatever you want in your eating window. Cause you know, there's some terrible foods out there for you. Foods that are going to clog your arteries and stuff like that. Like you don't want to be eating those during your eating window. And he makes it seem as if you can just go out and party during your eating window. And I, I call false on that. I mean, yeah, if you don't have a job and you're an entrepreneurial day and you like remain le relatively low stress, and you can hit the gym for multiple hours a day if you want to. I know he only works out like three days a week, but um, yeah, I see it. You know, when you don't have really things to really chase after in life that are like on your tail all the time, maybe. But you wouldn't want to because in the end, the quality of the foods that you're putting on your body are still going to affect your body. So, you know, are you going to eat red meat and steak all night long? If you're eating intermittent fasting, like I wouldn't want to. Um I think that'll just show up later down the road as bad cholesterol. When you get your checkups, you know, once a year from your doctors, they're going to be like, Hey, cholesterol super high. You got to do something about that. And at that point you'll realize, you know what, like intermittent fasting window, you still have to eat healthy in it, but you do get some good leeway because I feel as if it's really hard to get big and like for me fat again, just it was hard. It's, it's extremely hard. Um, yes, Mary Catch says fasting is great for diabetes and cancer patients. Exactly. Like super good, actually. Um, diabetes, cancer patients, and even uh, people with epilepsy problems. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so yeah, you're on, uh, for what it's worth, you know, I'm not dogging the dude whatsoever. I think it's a great, great uh, addition to the fitness community. I, I hope to become something like that as well in my other channel. And uh, yeah. Um, on the hunt, 907, 907, do you have a good juicer recipe? So the, I love my carrot juice, but you, but too much could be bad for me. All right. So you're just gonna have to do, I think, I think that one of the best things is called an ABCC. So apple, beet, carrot, and cayenne pepper. I think that's really good. Not too much cayenne. You can get like really crazy, but like apple, beet, uh, apple, beet, carrot, and cayenne. A little bit of cayenne, a little dash of cayenne pepper and give it a little kick. I think ABC is the one you want to go with. Um, if you want to throw spinach in there, that's cool. But some of these like juicers, no matter if they're centrifugal or masticating, they have trouble kind of doing the spinach thing. <laughs> Sometimes they have trouble with doing celery. I don't like celery because it gets all wrapped up in some of the weirdest parts um, because of the stringy parts of the celery. So I don't like that too much. Um, but yeah, ABC is my favorite juice. Anybody can make it. It's awesome as long as you have a juicer. But every juicer out there should be able to do an ABC with the B being the hardest one to, to juice up because it's the toughest one to beat. You have to kind of cut it up in certain parts to make it go through the juicer. The apple's the easiest, the carrot. Uh, the apple's the one I use at the very end to kind of clean the machine so it like flows out real good. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, <laughs> all right, any more questions, let me know. It's funny, I do a, you know, I, I do a video about how to make money and like selling and I know this is a reselling channel. I get it. I get it. But these videos, I'm not doing them to go, hey, everyone go to my other workout channel. I'm like, no, I'm doing these because I really care about you guys. I've met so many of you guys in real life and I realize what I know can help you out. Like what I know can help you out. Very, very important. So I feel as if it's almost, I don't know. It's not like a mission of mine to help you and like convert you to eat healthy and like be fit. But I probably will never stop uh, until... 
a large percentage of you guys that I meet in real life start curbing around some of your bad habits and start unlocking this life that you deserve. All right, not me, you on the other side of the screen. You deserve it. I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to say those like cliche words like you're good enough and like body positivity. No, I'm not going to say those things. That's super cliche and it's not right. But one thing that you deserve is this that we've been talking about. You deserve to know what this feels like and you should, you know, take those little small, simple steps to figure it out. You should. I'm telling you right now, I've lived both sides. Like this one's way better, like way better. It's kind of like that talk about money. I've been poor. I know. What is it? Huh. I've had, I've had no money problems and I've had money problems and the problems with money are much better. So I've had both sides of this whole thing. I've had, you know, overweight, way too big, bona fide hustler. I thought I was feeling great. And I've had this part of myself now knowing what I know and I feel way better, you know, so I'd much rather have the problems associated on this side than anything associated with that side. Um, on the hunt, uh, 90701, Craig, I am full of good questions. What type of cooking oils do you use and do you have a favorite type of food? So the cooking oils that I use, I have avocado spray. We kind of, we have olive oils, but we usually use those in a non-heated sense when it comes down to just uh, sprays that, and I use these things all, like, all the time. Like I put a spray down before I put my eggs on the skillet, uh, before I did the tofu that I cooked earlier today, before I cooked the squash that I cooked today. It was all avocado spray real quick. Um, we do not have canola oil, vegetable oils, or any of those weird oils. Um, with the item that I made today, the the poke recipe, I did put four to have that only for the poke recipe. Outside of that, it's avocado oil and olive oil, and that's it. Like those are the only two oils that we mess with. Um, <clears throat> so, what's my favorite type of food? Um. It's a really good question. I mean, I have a lot of favorite types of foods. My breakfast in the morning is not bad. I really like it a lot, strangely enough. Uh, so it's four pasture-raised eggs. This is typically like what I eat now. Four pasture-raised eggs, like whole eggs. And mind, mind you, this is a breakfast that occurs 20 minutes after I have a pretty big protein shake. So uh, four pasture-raised eggs, one whole avocado, of course, cut up and everything like that. Half a can of black beans, of organic black beans low sodium. And then I put salsa on top. And lately I've been putting some poppy seed dressing, just a little bit to give it kind of a creamy texture, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, eat all that up. And then I will have uh, about a really big handful of fruit. I'll take my hand like this, fill it with blueberries, blackberries, strawberries, whatever, maybe two handfuls if I'm feeling pretty hungry or if, or if I know there's like a, a good ride coming down in the day later, that's going to be a little longer than normal. I might eat more carbs. But um, yeah, that's something that I enjoy eating. I've been able to replicate that breakfast all the time and it's not phased me. I know it's good for me. Uh, it's got plenty of good proteins in there and got healthy fats, avocado. Um, it has a really good uh, way to flavor it without getting a sugar tax, for example, which is salsa. Um, because a lot of times if you're like, oh, I'm going to use ketchup or I'm going to use sriracha sauce, like, you know, these things have sugars in them. And you really kind of want to wean yourself away from added sugars. It's very important because those are the things that tell your brain, like, keep going, keep going. Like, yeah, you need that. Keep going. Like, I want to not have my brain doing things like that. <clears throat> Much easier for me to control my weight or the way I look if I don't have these, I don't know, these chemical reactions going on in my body, like when I put a single piece of sugar in my body, it's like, oh yeah, you should have more. Oh yeah, great. Or like some fried food, you're like, oh yeah, that tastes good, doesn't it? Healthy, hearty, right? And you're like, mm, not really, you know, but you sit there and you go, oh, but it's so greasy and like tasty. And so I'd rather wean myself away from all that kind of stuff so I don't get those signals. <clears throat> yeah, Mrs. Retro Favorite says sugar craves sugar. Absolutely does. Uh, Diego Garcia, random question. How long did it take you to grow your hair? Uh, you know, to about a decent length right here. It was probably a year and a half, but now it is down to maybe like right here. So two years, maybe. Mr. Mrs. Retro favorites, pasture raised eggs are the best. I cannot eat generic eggs anymore. So I'm going to leave you guys with this one thing um, because I got to get off the show here in a second. I got to kind of play with my dogs outside and it looks, it's looking like it's going to rain, but Check out the difference between pasture-raised eggs and free-range, cage-free, and just normal grade A. Look at the differences 
and read the articles that are out there that are going to explain to you the differences differences between the four varieties grade a normal farm eggs cage free free range and pasture raised go do a little bit of research and tell me you're not going to throw up when you figure out what the hell's going on because it is gross um yeah you want to be eating the eggs from the happy chickens i know it sounds like hey bona fide's about to go hug a tree this is some foo-foo stuff no like just do some research on google real quick and you'll see the conditions that are uh, present to get a majority of eggs sold in America. You'll see some of the conditions that these animals are living in and you'll be like, oh, and you're eating those things. Like you're eating things that come out of those things. It's, it's anyway, I'm not gonna sit there and tell you what to do. I will, I'll, I'll tell you at least to get informed so you can make a decision on what you wanna do. Um, Colby. Araho, do I do meal plans? I don't, but um, some of the paid options I will have later, um, I'll have workouts and full-blown like lifestyle, like, I don't know. I've always thought that, it's not that I've thought, I, I, I wholeheartedly believe that fitness is a combination of five very important yet hard to understand facets, all right? One, is going outside every day and like how to conquer all your goals and be ha be living a life where you see the outdoors as a resource and not like I gotta go outside I gotta sweat this sucks you know like so number one is that right number two is stress reduction stress reduction is gonna be one of the biggest things it's one of the unseen killers out there in America you want to reduce stress as much as possible you can get awesome gains if you can control your stress I uh, feel so much better about your life if you can control your stress so that's gonna be a part of my product as well. Number three is going to be diet, okay? But I have to be kind of careful since I'm not a registered nutritionist, like how much real diet advice can I give? And that's where it gets kind of like a, uh, you know, like, eh, can you really talk about that kind of stuff or not? But I'll at least make a guide or two just showing what I consider healthy and not healthy. And then you can make your stuff and your decisions based upon those guides. Uh, number four is um, strength training. You got to have the workouts in line. You have to know how to do them. You have to know what you're accountable for. You have to know how to track it. And you have to know what's it going to do for your body. Like, what's it going to make you look like? More muscles? Lose fat? Lose weight? Uh, get toned? Get ripped? Like, you got to know. You have to be, your actions have to be in line with the goal that you want. And so I build those effortlessly. They're super, super easy for me to do. But that's going to be part of number four on the lifestyle revamp. Um, and yeah, and then um, number five is how to get incredible sleep super important right how are you supposed to like rebuild all this amazing stuff how are you supposed to really put this all together it's with amazing sleep amazing sleep is how the nutrients get where they need to go sleep is what you know recharges your body it's what gets your muscles ready for the very next day those kind of things and so all that together is how you turn around a lifestyle now the th the sixth thing which i'll probably have as its own product eventually will be like a lifestyle consultation kind of thing where I work with people on a weekly basis to really, um, you know, there's a really bad word. It rhymes with duck. It has an F in it, has an F in it, right? But it really is a way for me to get with one-on-one -on -one with people and to un F word their lifestyle, right? Because a lot of people are stuck in these terrible circles that they don't know how to get out of like these things that just keep reoccurring and these, they're, they're terrible habits compounded upon terrible habits that are just synergistically, uh, you know, going on. Like there's really no way to undo it unless you make yourself aware and someone helps you un F word the entire situation. And so I want to be present in that and have people with me um, because I really do feel as if a majority of people that I interact with on a daily uh, basis, the ones that are the closest to me, start to un F word their life just from being around me they just do like whether it's like an alcohol problem or depression issue they start to realize like chris has certain ways that he does things that provides the answers i was looking for you know um and i'm not saying become like me i'm saying do some of these things and experiment and those are the things i want to talk about with people as we do one-on-one -on -one. so that's gonna be part of my programs as well and uh so yeah um nick k says i quit smoking two months ago best thing i did for my health and i can and i cannot believe i used to smoke so much yeah congratulations that is awesome um 
Yeah, so Diego Garcia says, thanks for the info. I'm beginning to grow my hair and I already miss having my hair short. No, man, just keep going. That's awesome. Um, Juan's, Juan says, hey, Chris, watching from Oakland, California. Good topic. All right, so the number one thing, if you're watching at this point, all right, um, I was saying this earlier about 30 minutes ago. I was like, it's funny. I put a Hustler video and like thousands of views and like people show up, hundred, you know, will show up live. I put out a Healthy Habits video. It's like 40 people max, like, I get it. Like a lot of people that don't want to learn this stuff, they don't want to hear me talk about it. They don't want to come face to face with what's really important. So for you 40 people, 41 people that have stayed with me the entire time, um, thank you so much, first of all. But second of all, if you like videos like this and you want me to do a part two, all right, then you have to just put a comment saying do a part two. That's it. All right, do a part two, and then maybe I'll put a post on Instagram five days before I do the video, and other places you'll see the post, and it'll say like, ask your open questions right here, and your questions will be guaranteed to get answers on the live show. So do a part two, and I would love to help you guys out. Like I said, it's gonna be part of me moving forward will be, you know, half of my business will be like with the Bod Damn channel, helping people like on F word their life, and then the other half's gonna be the bona fide hustler stuff where, you know, like, we go thrifting, we have fun, I make guides and I make videos and yeah, so should be really cool. Um, yeah, all I care about is like, you know, putting some positive vibes out there and making sure that you guys know that, uh, you know, you owe it to yourself to, f to feel better. You really do. Um, yeah, so, and you're super capable. Every one of you guys out there, gals that are watching this right now, like, ah, am I, can I do this? Like, is it possible? Yeah, absolutely it's possible. You can do whatever you want, all right, but you're gonna have to start acting in line with what you want okay that's the most important thing you have to act in line with what you want so sit back for a day or two start asking yourself look up in space whatever you know sit outside for a while and ask yourself what do we really want write a couple things down on a piece of paper and then you know when you begin every day and maybe at lunchtime and the closing of every day ask yourself in a mirror whatever before you go to bed did I line up a majority of the things that I did today with the three things that I want the most? And if your answers are yes, yes, and yes, and yes, yes, and yes, and yes, yes, and yes, you do that for 66 days, you're going to be like, you know what? I turned over a new leaf and that was freaking awesome. And that wasn't as hard as I thought. So I think everybody can do it. You guys, gals are super smart and uh, I hope to see you on the next show. So uh, that's pretty much it. And uh, yeah, like I said, if you want part two, type in part two, give it a thumbs up. Very important. So maybe this can reach some other people and become a ranked video on my channel somehow. Don't think it will, but you know, never know. Anyway, anyways, uh, have a good rest of your night. I'll see you next time. Take it easy. Goodbye.